Welcome to the Rustic Garden. Today is August 12th. I'm going to show you how to care for your zucchini and squash plants. We're going to hit them with a water-soluble fish emulsion, insoluble granular type fertilizer for a top dressing. I'm going to show you how to use hydrogen peroxide to prevent powdery mildew from taking your plants. There's no powdery mildew on here. It's been really effective. And I'm also going to show you how to use insect dust to stop the vine borer. What is a vine borer? Well, a moth comes somewhere along the plant, lays eggs, they hatch, they dig into the stem, work their way to the center of the stem, and then they sit down there, chew the insides of the stem up as they develop, they get large, all of a sudden you look at your zucchini plant that usually looks something like this, nice and healthy, and then the leaves just all wilt, every leaf wilts, and you wonder what happened to my plant. Well that's the vine borers eating the life out of your plant from the inside. Now, keep that in mind that if you do get vine borers and they're starting to dig in here, you can dig them out. I'm going to show you how to prevent them from getting there. But this is really cool. Your zucchini plants are vines. So if there's damage here, and I'm going to do this today, see all that? That's root growth. Right in here you can see a root coming out going into the ground. We had crazy rain and during that period this plant was turned this way and the vine, the stem, was touching the ground. These are all roots. So I'm going to drop some earth right into here and there'll be a root system here, a root system there, and that will help you combat possible damage from vine borers. The dust will also work. So let's start with hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide is something I've been using now really for the last four weeks. Six tabs per gallon six tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide, the 3% that you buy at any grocery store or pharmacy, to one gallon of water. Work your way up. You can start with six tablespoons, go to eight tablespoons, go to 10 tablespoons, and I'm spraying now 12 tablespoons, and I'm stopping there because I found it to be very effective. Don't just jump to whatever spray somebody tells you, even if you've been watching my videos for a long time. Sprays can vary based on temperature, heat, location. So start at six tablespoons, spray your leaves, spray a couple of them, wait 24 to 48 hours. If there's no damage, go ahead and spray again, or spray all the plant. And then over time, you can work your way up if you feel like the dose needs to go up. Now, inspection. Looking at these leaves, you can see a little bit of spotting there. That's okay but they look really healthy, nice and green. These are going to get a continued feed of the organic fertilizers. If this plant was beat up or damaged, I would use some of the chemical fertilizers because they pack a better punch and help really fix a plant if it's been damaged. But no need to use them because this plant's doing really well, so I'm gonna stick with my organic routine. So how do I use hydrogen peroxide? Spray the top of the leaves, spray the bottom of the leaves, spray the stems, soak it down. That's how you use it. Now hydrogen peroxide contacts the leaves if there are any spores on there from fungus. Also irritates and can kill off spider mites and aphids. Don't quote me on that yet, but I'm finding good results with that. It contacts the insects, contacts the spores. H2O2 is hydrogen peroxide. When that extra oxygen atom leaves the H2O, Two, it creates an oxygen and it creates water. That reaction creates energy or heat and that's what really ends up damaging and killing the fungus and the insects. Now that was a mouthful. Why do I explain it that way? Because hydrogen peroxide is sprayed on the leaves, it does its thing and then it goes away. It doesn't protect your plant leaves from future fungus, fungi or insects coming to your plant. So when you put down say baking soda wettable sulfur or any kind of antifungals, you spray the leaves, it stays on there, and it creates an environment on the leaf that's inhospitable to the fungi. So they don't establish, they don't start growing, and it's really a way to prevent them from attaching. Hydrogen peroxide, if you have an outbreak and you spray, it will actually kill the fungus. That's what I found, it will kill the fungi. I'm using it now about every three days on my tomato plants every four or five days on my squash and zucchini. And I'm just spraying them 
tops, bottoms, undersides. And what I think it's doing, it's just killing any kind of spores that are landing on there and it's just keeping them clean. If I stop spraying this though, the spores can establish, insects can come back. So I just want you to know the difference. That this is just kind of, you spray it, it does its thing, and then it's gone. Alright, so here's how I do it. Again, I'm using 12 tablespoons per gallon. I highly recommend you do what I said and just work your way up. And you just get in there and you soak the tops, the undersides, the stems, where the vine borers would go. And you do this first. And you can do it every four or five days. And I would go and soak everything down. When it hits the leaf, the H2O2 reacts over the day, loses the oxygen atom. That release creates energy, damages the fungi. That's the best I can understand, and I think it's, it's fairly accurate. If anybody else knows the details, please put it in a comment. And then the H2O2 is changed to an oxygen atom and into water, and it's gone. So do this every four or five days. If you had an outbreak, you could do this every other day until you felt like the outbreak was under control. All right, it's not quite dry, but it's close enough. First thing you want to do, get in with a pair of scissors and remove your zucchini. That's a nice zucchini. You, a lot of people, you harvest them about this size. When it go from here to here, maybe six inches, that's perfect for salads and for uh, like stir fries and stuff like that. As you let them get bigger, you can still eat them. This is when I start making um, zucchini parmesan. So I like to let my zucchini get larger and then I slice them up and make zucchini parmesan. So take the zucchini out. Right in there is where the roots are growing. There are no flowers in here and if you look up here, actually, you can see two more zucchini. The flowers are way up there. I'll show you another plant so that I'll show you how you can identify the male and female flowers. But what I want to do is just cover the roots that are coming up. Really get that part of the stem covered. And I'm just getting around the stems of the leaves. And you would just build a nice mound around here. So These plants want to system. survive. It's going to survive. And again, I'm in the middle of August, so my goal is to really get this plant ready to go and make it towards the end of September, early October. Now here's the dust. This is uh, Captain Jack's dead bug. You can use this in organic gardens. However, just because it's for organic gardens, it doesn't mean it doesn't kill good insects. So you want to use dusts really wisely. I'll put a link in the video description if you want to check that out. I also use seven dust. I personally researched it and I'm comfortable using it. Not organic, but either way, this kills good and bad insects. So you just don't want to throw it. Whoa, let's toss that one. You just don't want to throw it all over your plant leaves. You want to use it in a targeted way and I'll show you how to do that. Now to keep the vine borer at bay and other harmful insects, you want to do this about once a week. If it rains heavily, you're going to have to do it sooner. Right along the stem, you're just going to drop the dust. Don't be shy with it. Any insect moving along there is going to crawl in it. Also, if you have beetles, you have squash bugs, you have other insects, don't throw the dust all in there where the bees and the pollinators go. Just put it on one leaf over there, one leaf over there. The beetles and the other insects that are harmful crawl all over your plants, so you can just set up kind of some dust traps for them. Now, where I put down the earth, I'm going to put some right on there, and that's all you need to do. That will really reduce the damage of vine borers. It will also take care of other problem insects. Don't put it down where the flowers are. Okay, let's get to feeding. So this plant got in the ground towards the end of June. It's been producing nicely for me. Now, 
I'm going to put down the insoluble granular fertilizer. And insoluble means that this fertilizer has to be put into the ground or onto the ground. Soil biology interacts with it, breaks this down further into a form of nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium that the plant can use. We're going to use the water-soluble fish emulsion. Water-soluble fertilizers means the plant can use it right away. So we're using two different types. Now you might have realized that I did this out of order. I should have put the organic fertilizer down first and then watered it in with the fish emulsion. So pretend I didn't do this till after this part. So with a plant this big, it's going into the ground right here. You want, that's about a tablespoon, scatter two or three tablespoons around the plant. When it rains, when you water it in, the insoluble fertilizer will start to kind of dissolve and float into the ground and soil biology will interact with it and interact with it and it's going to slowly release the nutrients to your plant. Now we want to also give this guy a drink of an insoluble fertilizer. I'm using a fish emulsion. The insoluble type that I just use, I recommend trying to stay around a 555 NPK. That's not always easy to find, so if you're up or down a little bit on the numbers, that's perfectly fine. This is fish emulsion. This is a 5115 nitrogen, a little bit higher nitrogen for the leaves. And you would just water in around the base. And this is how much I give them. People always ask me, well, how much? Every 10 to 14 days? That's about how I do it. So you're going to be putting water on the insoluble that you put down. That'll get it going and then you've watered the plant with a soluble water fertilizer, which means that N, P, and K will be able to be absorbed quickly into the plant. Well, let's just, oh, I can't put it back now, but then we would come back, obviously, and put the dust down. All right, let me show you what the male and female flowers are. This is my other zucchini plant, a cocazelle. It went in a little bit later, it's smaller. It's not ready yet to have the center of the stem buried because it's still small, but it is ready. There's no flowers down there to have the insect dust placed down there. And again, on the outer leaves, you could go ahead and put some dust and that will help manage insects that harm your plants, squash bugs, vine borers, all that. Here we go. A squash plant, zucchini plant, has male, yeah, female and male flowers. You can see a baby zucchini right there, a baby zucchini right there. That's the female flower, and this is the flower head. It's not quite ready to open, but it's going to open soon. This is a male flower. It's just a stem. There's no zucchini along there. Not ready to flower yet. This is a male flower back here. Just a stem, ready to flower. The timing has to be right, that the female flower, the male flowers have to open up at the same time, and then the pollinators move pollen between them and it pollinates the female flower. If the female flower gets pollinated, this little baby zucchini or squash is gonna to grow to full size. It's gonna end up, you know, growing and turning into something like this. If it doesn't get pollinated, and this is where a lot of people get confused, it's gonna get maybe two or three inches in size, maybe a little bit less, but it's going to brown tip. It's going to start dying off all along here. And then people panic, like, is that blossom end rot for zucchini or squash? What kind of disease is it? And it's not a problem. It's just that it wasn't pollinated. And if it's not pollinated, this guy grows for a little bit, then it dies off. It starts to brown at the tip, and it's not viable. So you have to have this male flower open, the female flower open at the same time, usually within 24 hours, 48 hours, and the pollinating insects will go from the male flower to the female flower, your zucchini will be pollinated and you'll be able to harvest something like this. Hope you enjoyed the video. This gives you some ideas of how to care for your squash and zucchini plants. Please check out my seed shop at www.therustedgarden.com. Thanks for watching.